on the flight deck of the nuclear-powered carrier Enterprise in the Mid-South Pacific. We're here reporting on the simulation of a full nuclear attack and to watch the Big E demonstrate its ability to... to overcome the effects of such an attack and to fight back. The jets have been taking off for what seems like a half hour at a rate of one about every 15 seconds. This is accomplished through the use of four catapults, which, when released, whip the jets to a speed of 150 miles per hour in just 250 feet. As I've stated, this is a simulation of an attack, but it's as close as I care to... Get to the real thing. The Navy's done a great job of planning for this mock attack, so as to be better prepared when they're faced with the real thing and unable to plan for it. Right now, I've been told we're doing about 40 miles per hour. You old Navy men can break that down into knots if you like. Anyway, that's a lot faster than the World War II carriers. In comparison, they were... Now hear this. Attack! Attack! All hands below! This is it. I'm heading for the hatch. I wouldn't care to be caught up here, even though this is a drill, as you'll soon see. Attack! Attack! All hands below! We're below deck now and completely sealed off from the outside. Because the Enterprise is nuclear-powered, she doesn't need outside air or stacks for her propulsion system. That whirring sound in the background is from the giant air conditioning plants. They're purifying and recirculating the air. But the most fascinating thing is going on outside at this time. Assuming we were caught in the fallout area of a bomb, the Enterprise's decks and complete exterior would be dangerous long after the air cleared. To cure this problem, and the reason I said I wouldn't like to be topside at this time, is the Big E is washing herself. There's the executive officer. Oh, Commander. Yes. I was just explaining that the Big E was actually taking a bath. That's one way of putting it. A system of heavy salt water spray is washing down the flight deck, the island, and all the exposed surfaces. This, of course, washes away any radioactive fallout. As soon as she's through, we can prepare to bring our birds back to roost. I'm sorry I can't stay. Getting your sea legs yet? Yes, sir. Thank you for stopping. The Big E is an arsenal of almost limitless range. A seagoing airfield whose planes pack more punch than all the carrier strikes of World War II. Of course, she carries a hundred... Now hear this! Alert! Alert! Torpedo amidships! Stand by to flood compartments 23B and 11A! Flood compartments! Torpedo. This is another fascinating aspect of this modern ship. She's composed of compartments some of which are filled with air, others with water. They're built this way to absorb the shock of an explosion and to stop metal fragments. Also, they flood those compartments in opposition to those flooded by the torpedo, and this keeps the flight deck level. The eight nuclear reactors are well protected down in the hull. Those 200,000 horsepower reactors are giants, but then they have to be to propel a ship this size with a four-acre flight deck. Sir? Hi, Chief. What's happening? Well, nothing really, sir. The exec thought you'd like a little company now that the test's over. Sure would. You say the test's over? Yep, we're clear out of the target area and washed down clean. We can go topside again if you'd like. Sure feels good to be out in the open air again. That may have been a test, but it sure gave me an eerie feeling. Don't you get tired of this, all these tests? No, it's routine, of course, but there's no question about it that we need it. The pilots have to get carrier qualified, and the crew's got to get sharp enough for any emergency. Now, not long ago, we really had one. In about mid-January, we were cruising 70 miles southwest of Hawaii. Captain, the helos are pulling the men out of the sea. Good. We'll be into the wind in a moment and blow the flames off the stern. Order the planes to divert to Barber's Point. Aye, aye, sir. Higgins, get down there and help the injured at sick bay. Aye, aye, sir. And get those choppers to take the bad ones to Hawaii as soon as possible. O'Hara, get the washdown system going. It all started with an accidental bomb explosion. We did lose some men, and the flight deck was charred and buckled. But if it hadn't been for the training we got in those tests, we'd have been a lot worse off. How about the power plant? Untouched. Eight hours later, we were at port in Pearl Harbor. I'll tell you, you can't tell by looking at her that she'd been through all that. 
Looks as new as the day she left the waves. Well, they'll be coming in now. I've got to get going. Nice talking with you, sir. So long, Chief, and thanks. You know, it really is amazing. The Big E really looks pampered. She was first launched September 24th, 1960 at Newport News, Virginia. And she's not the first naval ship called the Enterprise. There were seven others. But this one's the most modern, biggest granddaddy of them all. It's actually a floating city of 5,000 men with every facility. She sailed nonstop around the world in 65 days. She's 25 stories high and nearly a quarter of a mile long. On deck and below are housed a hundred aircraft. Here they come. Behind us now is a destroyer, and overhead are helicopters ready for any emergency. But everything appears normal and operating like a well-oiled machine. The ship, silhouetted by the horizon and blue sky, looks so majestic that one tends to forget what the big E really is and why she's sailing the seas. A guardian of peace and one of our greatest warriors, if need be.